This episode of Monster Model Review, we have Mark McGovern, award-winning modeler, super conversionist, artist, actor, and so much more. Mark's father started him building models when he was eight years old when they co-built the 148th scale Aurora B-26 Martian Marauder Bomber. And he honors his memory today by sponsoring the James J. McGovern Award for Best 132nd Scale Aircraft at local shows as his father was into large-scale World War II fighters. Mark wasn't hooked until Christmas of that year when his next-door neighbor gave him the classic Aurora Mummy model, and that's when the lights came on. His interest in both the hobby and the horror genre began and continue unabated. Mark continued building kits throughout his teen and college years, his skills improving gradually. Then, in the mid-1980s, he started reading Fine Scale Modeler magazine. Thanks to FSM, Mark's model building skills became much stronger and more varied than they were. FSM also made him aware of the International Plastic Modeler Society. He joined the local chapter in 1996 and entered his first IPMS competition that year. A few years later, Mark entered his first Wonderfest model contest and was able to meet outstanding modelers with the same interests as his. Mark has produced a plethora of build-ups over the years. Here's just a taste of his modeling career. In 1998, Polar Light reissued the robot from Lost in Space. Although Mark built the model straight out of the box, its base does sport the signature of Bob May, who wore the robot suit in the series. The model won a bronze award at Wonderfest in 1999. Also in 1999, Polar Lights, in collaboration with Ravel, reissued the first four classic Aurora monster kits, including Frankenstein's Monster, Dracula, the Wolfman, and the Mummy. Although Mark had already built these kits, he couldn't resist picking them up again, and with a couple other kits, The Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Phantom of the Opera, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and Dr. Jekyll as Mr. Hyde, he created Aurora Presents the Universal Monsters Collection. This collection included the eight monsters based on characters from Universal Studios motion pictures. Sneaking in the Jekyll Hyde kit as it resembles the same monster in Universal's Abbott and Costello meet Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and ignoring the Bride of Frankenstein for it being out of scale with the rest of the set. The base created for this buildup was a long comic book storage box, covered with cellu-clay and painted up to look like stone. Mark went on to win awards in several local and regional IPMS contests and took first place at the 2001 IPMS Nationals in Chicago, Illinois. Even though Mark didn't use The Bride of Frankenstein in the previous collection, when Polar Lights reissued The Bride, it gave him the opportunity to replace some of the kit parts. He added details to the underside of the shelf and lab table, and also added flashing lights to the kit's voltage control box and scratch built the coil. The Bride received a bronze award at Wonderfest 2005. Back in the early 2000s, Mark had a number of appearances in the Modeler's Resource magazine, which was published by Fred DeRuvo. First up, we have the Ravel monogram reissue of Alfred E. Newman appearing in Modeler's Resource number 41. Coincidentally, you can see Rob and myself in the same issue. Mark's brother Ratfink on a Bike Buildup was included in the book Ratfink, The Art of Ed Big Daddy Roth and Modeler's Resource number 43. In Modeler's Resource number 45 was the Gigantic Frankenstein, an original Aurora issue which Mark received as a 10th birthday present and reworked many years later in the year 2000. Sporting an excellent paint job, the base is an incredible feat of engineering. Big Frankie competed in many IPMS shows and Wonderfest 2003, where it won a gold award. The Ravel monogram reissue of Aurora's Robin, The Boy Wonder, was the basis of a seven-part series called Modeling Basics 101 in Modeler's Resource number 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 60, and 62. Issue number 53 sports an incredible Hulk cover by Mark as well as an article inside, and the Minion from the Gate painting article in Modeler's Resource number 57. Mark's aim is always to demonstrate how the mastery of basic techniques coupled with a little ingenuity could produce award-winning results without the use of expensive tools and materials. Mark resculpted the Aurora's King Kong head to better resemble the monster in the 1933 film. He also added detail to the girl figure's hair and feet. On the base, he created a riser made with styrofoam covered with woodland scenic foam putty and created much larger trees which he cobbled together from woodland scenic items. Getting away from Aurora, this Lindbergh UFO is a Glencoe Models reissue. 
Mark fleshed out the alien pilot by slicing up a 148th scale figure from an airplane kit to extend the alien's body. He cut open the cockpit and continued the molded detail into the UFO. The Absorbing Man won Mark a Gold and Most Amazing Figure Model Award at Wonderfest in 2014. The process for creating the Absorbing Man's base was published in From Graves to Caves, a book by Fred DeRuvo, who is also the publisher of Modeler's Resource Magazine. Here is Jimmy Flintstone's resin Spaceman Spiff, a model based on Calvin and Hobbes and built for Mark's brother, who is a longtime fan of the comic strip. In 2010, through the courtesy of Steve Cult TV Man Iverson, Mark was introduced to Round 2, and he was very fortunate to be chosen by Round 2 to build test shots for their release of old and new model kits. Some of the kits he did for them are Barnabas Collins and the Werewolf were both characters from the ABC TV daytime soap opera Dark Shadows. Round 2 MPC reissued snap kits of the Incredible Hulk and the Amazing Spider-Man. Polar Light's third issue of Forbidden Planet's Robbie the Robot included a figure of Altera with new arms for him to carry her and a new base. Round 2 MPC reissued the Strange Change models of the 1970s. The surprisingly well-detailed models featuring a coffin for the vampire, a sarcophagus with a mummy, and a time machine. The rubber band power cam mechanism rotates the interiors of these kits to reveal a new scene. Mark built the heads and refurbished the bodies of Polar Light's The Beatles Yellow Submarine figures for the pre-painted Snapfit release. The last two figure kits he built for round two were all new Snapfit models of Wolverine and Superman. Along the way, Mark has written and drawn a horror comic series with two of his friends, executed innumerable other artworks, including his two-dimensional magnum opus, a 40 by 8 mural he painted for the children's section of the Oregon branch of the Toledo Lucas County Public Library. Much like most of us modelers, Mark has a passion for special effects and makeup and dabbles in local community theater. Here are a couple pieces Mark did for the Toledo repertoire, and when not creating and applying the makeup, he's working on sets, props, and even appears on stage. It doesn't hurt one's modeling to have the love and support of a good partner. Mark and his wife Kathy have been married for over 30 years. She's also been very supportive of his pastime, which has been a blessing to Mark in the hobby. To see what Mark's up to, and more of his outstanding build-ups, head on over to his website, mcgovernmodels.com. For more reviews, artist profiles, how-tos, and more, check us out at monstermodelreview.com. And you can also find us on Facebook. I've been your host, Chris Gerke. Thanks for watching.